What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. I get to talk about one of my favorite baits, but before I do that, I just want to say thank you for stopping by. Thanks for checking out the video. Thank you for, if you haven't already, liking, subscribing, and smashing the like button uh, so that you can go ahead and support the Monster Bass channel and everything we do here. And if you enjoy the content, you can head, head over to Aggressively Average Anglers. We have similar content we got the unboxings we got the fishing videos we got reviews we got all kinds of stuff tips tricks we also have a live that goes every single wednesday 8 p.m eastern come check us out we have guests from all over the industry we do uh, all kinds of you know learning techniques uh, so we can go ahead and get better together today we're going to talk about one of my favorite baits which is the bladed jig it stands in a category all its own it's a unique bait but it's kind of a hybrid of a couple of different baits uh, i'm going to tell you my three favorite trailers as well as my three favorite places where I like to fish them. The February Monster Bass box is actually going to be jammed with only Strike King baits, and you're going to be getting one of my favorite bladed jigs, and that is the Strike King Thunder Cricket. So the Strike King Thunder Cricket looks like this. And how will you know a Thunder Cricket? Well, when you see that painted blade, that is gonna be your first tip. Now, what makes a bladed jig a bladed jig? So you've got a jig. So if you just imagine that this blade wasn't here, you've got a jig. So you've got the jig head, you've got the hook coming out the back there, but you also have a loosely attached jig. Now, what's weird about the bladed jig is that the tie-in is actually underneath the blade. So what happens when you pull this across the water, water and force are pressed up against the blade and it's going to move side to side like this. It's going to go tick -tick 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 across the water and then that creates a side to side motion in the jig itself. Um, this is a giant fish catcher. What's nice about these uh, baits is that they ride a little bit higher in the water column. My favorite size, my go-to all around is a 3 8 ounce. You can get them all the way from a quarter ounce to an ounce and all different sizes, but I like the 3 8 half ounce somewhere in there. That's my usual go-to for search and destroy. So what I'm gonna walk you through today, again, I'm gonna talk to you about my three favorite trailers. One of them you'll see, oh, I'm gonna save this one. I'm gonna save this one. The most generic one and the one that I feel like people use the most often is the paddle tail. So any kind of paddle tail. You could certainly use a fluke, but any fish imitation, this is a good way to do it. I like this, but this is actually probably the one that I gravitate towards the least these days. After fishing, bladed jigs for a long time, these tend to slow those bladed jigs down. They also, paddle tails are usually flat, like this one you can see right here has a flat paddle tail. The way those are designed to work is water's moving across the bait's body, and then it's trying to actually impart a side-to-side -side action on the tail, so the tail's twitching this way. Now, bladed jigs, like I mentioned, when the water's pushing against this blade, it's going this way and it's shuddering side-to-side, -side, so is the bait. So really, it doesn't really take full advantage of the paddle tail. You're almost better off using a fluke style, in my opinion. But this is a great way to fish it. It gives a little extra action, a little extra vibration. So if you're slow fishing, you're fishing a little higher in the water column, or you're targeting a specific type of bait fish, yes, this is one of my favorites. Whether it's a paddle tail or a fluke style, any fish imitation is a great trailer. And before I go on, you can certainly run these naked. And by naked, I mean no plastic trailer. But I'm gonna walk you through three of my favorites. So that was number one, any kind of paddle tail. Now we're gonna get a little bit on the specific side. This is the Big Bite Baits Kamikaze Swim On. This one is uh, 4.25 inches. The color though, this is really important. This color right here, smoky gold, hands down one of my favorites. I've seen some other folks on this channel uh, who are really great anglers, way better than me, have also called out this color. It's just, it matches with so many uh, different, um, different color skirts. Uh, these jigs, by the way, like, I'll show you three different colors. I'll show you like the blue and white you saw, the green pumping, which is what the one I'm hoping you get in your Monster Bass box. And also I'll show you a black and blue. These are my go-tos. Um, but this one right here, the smoky gold, check that color out. It matches with almost everything and is a really unique color. But what do I like about the swim on? I like the swim on because it has a ribbed body. So it's giving you a little bit of disturbance in the water in addition to all the vibration from that jig. But then it trims down to a very, very trim, uh, but also because it's flat here, it's trim, but it leads to a really aggressive uh, tail that takes full advantage of that side to side motion. So as you can see, every little side to side motion is gonna give a huge swing of the tail. And that is just, it draws a lot of fish. We'll say this though, it also draws a lot of pike. Beware, I use straight braid most of the time when I'm fishing these because I'm in the uh, Midwest, so I'm in Michigan, we do get a lot of uh, bycatch of pike. Those toothy critters can be absolutely brutal on like a, a fluoro, so I tend to go straight braid, but that's just me. Number three, and the one you probably would not have guessed, 
Here's a black and blue or a black, blue, green pumpkin combo. I like a craw. This may be my second favorite. Next to something like the Swim On, uh, this is probably my favorite. The one I've got here for you today that I'm featuring is the Kickin' Craw from Fish Lab. Really cool craw. It's got its own skirt attached. Some really trim craws, but a whole bunch of different appendages. Uh, this one is the uh, Green Pumpkin blue and it is a freaking awesome combo that goes really well with this green pumpkin black and blue um, jig this thunder cricket right here why do i say the craw is probably my favorite one there's a billion different shapes sizes widths lengths and appendage types for craws this one as you can see is a little bit on the gangly side it's got these long ones and it is going to provide a lot of action but there's some that have longer craws there's some that have flange craws they're going to go up and down even it just provides a really versatile type of action to your jig this one is more complimentary uh, it just gives a little body but others they can be really slim and just add a little action or it can be really big and heavy and they can even sit up on top of grass as you're dragging it through so they can do a lot of different things for you but they're giving you a little more action do not be afraid to put a craw on the back of a swimming bait like a bladed jig, the Thunder Cricket. So those are my three favorite types of trailers if you're gonna go for a trailer. Now, when am I gonna use them? What are my three favorite times? My number one favorite time is basically what I will call spinner bait weather. So that means uh, anytime you see cloudy or overcast days, anytime there's wind, wind blowing banks, anytime there's uh, disturbance on the water, I am reaching for that bladed jig. Um, it, it's just a fish catching machine. I feel like that's when it does most of its best work and when you're gonna have the best chance of catching a fish. In those scenarios, I'm either going very natural, uh, like maybe a bluegill presentation or a green pumpkin or a black and blue. Those are kind of the three that I use. Darker colors usually are more natural during those cloudy types of situations. Now, if the water's really stained, I might go with that chartreuse. That's when I really like to use the chartreuse in that dark water. But typically I'm going with more natural in that cloudy weather situation. My second favorite is anytime you've got some down branches or you've got some wood or sticks or trees in the water. Uh, Debo's Fishing, uh, Devin from Debo's Fishing, who you've seen on this channel quite a few times, he has a famous saying, see wood, pitch to wood. And in my estimation, that fits almost perfectly with a bladed jig. I want to see that they run through cover. And these Thunder Crickets, um, just because, I don't know if it's the shape of that jig, they have a unique blade for sure, and the, you can tell the front is tipped up there, but these tend to bump and deflect cover really, really well, better than some other bladed jigs. This is where they excel for me. And again, if you're grabbing a cross, I'm gonna flat bottom, you're gonna have a little even better ability to deflect against cover. So this is my go-to setup for uh, pitching against wood or into wood. And last, but certainly not least, is over grass. These do a great job, especially in that half ounce range of riding a couple of feet under the water. Certainly you can let them sink and draw them up and fish deeper if you need to, kind of like a spinner bait. But these excel a couple feet down under the water column, one to five feet, and that is just a killer option when you have taller grasses, especially on points or any ambush positions or anytime you see a big log surrounded by grass. A bladed jig is gonna do a wonderful job of searching that big grassy area or that, uh, or that uh, point, and you're gonna be able to really dig in and find some fish. Uh, the reason it's my number three is because that's also when I tend to get some of my most uh, aggressive pike strikes and that's when I tend to lose some of these baits. They are a little expensive. These are in the 10 to 15 dollar range depending on what site you're shopping on and whether or not you can find them on sale, the striking thunder cricket anyways, but these tend to be a little more expensive no matter what. There are some cheaper brands out there and they're very very good, uh, but 10 to 15 dollars roughly what you can expect to pay uh, for a quality bladed jig. And don't forget this one is coming in your February Monster Bass Box. So those are my three favorite places my three favorite trailers for running a bladed jig i hope that you learned something today i hope that these tips are helpful for you if you have any questions leave them in the comments below i'm always watching uh, and i watch these for months so if you're seeing this later go check it out i i tend to come back to these and i will give you uh, my best answer possible again hope you learned something hope you enjoy this hope you have an awesome day and i hope you get to try one of these in, from when you get your february monster bass box and i hope you catch some fish on them have a good day everybody catch you on the next video